What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to highlight some free Geometry Nodes assets that you can download in order to quickly add landscapes, trees, other things like that to your Blender models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will link to all of these in the notes below this video. But first off, we've got the stylized fantasy tree generator from RC12. So this is a tool specifically designed to help you generate this kind of like fantasy tree style model. Um, so this isn't necessarily going to replace like a full on tree generator or anything like that, but it does give you the ability to really quickly create some cool trees. So you can download this. Note that with all of these, um, you can enter a value of $0 to download them for free. And if you wanna put in a value of more than $0, you can just support the developers for the cool stuff that they're doing. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at the fantasy tree generator. And so when you open this up, the tree is gonna look something like this. And there's really kind of two areas where you can adjust the tree. The first is you can adjust the profiles of the trunk radius and the trunk itself using the little graph over here. So notice how I can use this to adjust the radius of the trunk. So notice how as I drag this up, um, the top or the bottom of the trunk will get bigger or smaller depending on where I place this. So you can use this to really kind of adjust both the profile, which is gonna be the direction of the trunk. So notice how if I kind of drag this down, this is gonna be more of like a linear tree. You can use this to kind of set the direction that it's using to set the general size of the tree. But then once you've done that, you've got options off to the right hand side where you can adjust things like the number of branches or trunk pieces that are created right here. So notice how I can use the seed in order to generate different tree functions right here. You can also adjust things like the resolution of your trunk. Right, so the higher resolution is gonna add more curves um, to the trunk. The lower one is just gonna make them more like straight. So you can adjust the resolution in order to do that. You've also got the ability to come in here and edit things like uh, the leaves and the way that those are generated in here, as well as the seed of the branches. So, and usually this actually works pretty well in the way that it generates these trees. Every now and then you get something that's kind of like off in the distance like this that looks a little bit funky, but overall um, it works really well. It's also got the ability where you can adjust the leaves like this. And so one cool thing about this is the tree is separate from the base, meaning you can make a copy of the tree and the base doesn't go with it. And then you could adjust the seed, right? So I'm gonna come in here and just uh, adjust this right here, but I can adjust the seed of the tree in order to get different branches, I could adjust the number of branches, other things like that. So you can use this in order to create different versions of the trees really quickly. And so if you play the animation in here, one thing you're gonna notice is this comes with wind enabled, meaning this tree is gonna look like it's moving in the breeze and you can adjust things like the wind speed using the wind speed slider, but then you can also adjust this so that you get leaves falling off of your tree as well. So this is a really cool way to create these kind of like stylized fantasy trees that are blowing in the wind. All right, so next up, we've got Natural Set. So Natural Set is basically a collection of free objects that you can use in your scenes. So it comes with a number of different objects, including um, flowers, plants, grass, trees, and rocks. Um, it's basically just a um, asset collection is all that it is. Um, but they come in as an asset collection that you can access from directly inside of the Blender Asset Browser. So it's easy to install right here. So um, it's got things like uh, different plants. You can see them all in the example file that you can download. And then you can use geometry nodes or other tools in order to actually like spread these across surfaces and other things like that in your scene. So note that this one, if you get the $3 version is also gonna come with extra models, um, including a geometry nodes demo. He's also got a video down below that teaches you how to um, set up the geometry nodes um, in your scene if you wanna use those to spread them across your scene. So if you're looking for kind of like a starter asset library, this could be a good place to start. All right, so next up, we've got the stylized grass with geometry nodes from, uh, I think it's Ray or re, um, but this is basically a tool. It's very simple, but what it does is it generates different kinds of stylized grass inside of Blender, right? So you can use this to really quickly add this stylized grass with wind and other things like that. And so basically the way that this one works is if I was to hit play right here, notice what it's doing is it's kind of using, um, it's kind of adding the wind 
blowing across this object right here. And it kind of uses the UVs in order to set up this effect, I think. But basically what it does is you can come in here and you can adjust things like the density of the grass. I want to make sure I have the right plane selected. But notice how I can bring that density down in order to get less grass or up in order to get more. And then we've also got options in here to adjust things like the scale of the wind noise in here, the wind influence, um, as well as adding some randomization. So you can adjust the noise and the grass, other things like that. And so say that you want to add this to a new object, basically all you want to do is just select whatever that object is, go into your modifiers, and I'm going to add a geometry nodes modifier. And then as long as you have the grass textures in your scene, you can just come in here and you can just select this and it's going to add the geometry nodes to the scene like this. And so if you're looking for like this quick grass look in here, this is an easy way to do that. All right, so next up, we've got Bush Draw, which is basically a tool designed to help you um, procedurally generate shrubs and hedges in your model. And so there's two versions of Bush Draw. There's the free version and then the supporter version. Um, that's gonna come with some additional like pre-made setups of different kinds of bushes and hedges. But basically the way this one works is it's set up to work with the asset browser, but what you can do is you can drag these in and then draw curves on your surfaces and it's gonna quickly generate bushes. So um, the way this works, let's jump over into Blender really quick and I've just got the free version in here. But when you drag this in, you wanna make sure that you drag it in like this and you want to make sure that the box for instance is not checked so uncheck the box for instance right here what that's going to do is that's going to bring in a example surface which you can delete and then it's also going to bring in your bush draw object and your curve and so your bush draw object is going to be the object with the geometry node set up and that's going to allow you to set a target object that your bushes go on and then your curve is going to set where your objects go. So in this case, right, we've got this pre-made curve. I'm gonna tap the A key and hit X to delete it. Well, now we're in curve mode. What I can do is I can draw on the surface right here. This is gonna generate bushes along the curves that I generate right here. And so you can tab out of edit mode and click on these and then go in here to adjust things like the seed as well as the height of those bushes if they come in here too tall, um, the scale, other things like that. Now, um, the, the settings on this one to me are a little bit twitchy, so you're gonna have to kind of play around with this a little bit, but I do find that this can be an easy way to come in here and just like draw on a surface, right? And if you wanna add more or remove some, you can just select your curve, tab into edit mode, and then say I wanted to delete this, you just delete the vertices, right? Same thing over here, if I was to select this and extrude it, Right, if I tap the E key, notice how I'm getting some additional bush, um, bush or shrub kind of drawn in here if I add to the top of that. So um, you can use the curves in order to quickly generate this stuff in here. But you are probably going to want to kind of play around and familiarize yourself with the settings a little bit. There's some more detailed instructions on the bush draw page as well that'll walk you through some of this. So um, definitely worth giving a try, especially the free version. Then if you're looking for some more presets, then there's that five euro plus option in there as well. All right, and then we've also got Mossify, which is basically a free procedural moss generator in here. You can see that this is a pretty popular setup. You can see it's already got like 24,000 downloads or something like that. It's basically a tool designed to um, help you create high quality moss inside of Blender. And so if you click on this button right here, there's actually a detailed tutorial talking about how to use this to set some high quality moss inside of Blender. And so if we open this one up, it's going to come with this sample um, model that allows us to adjust the moss. And so if you look at this over on the right hand side, you click on it and um, you get the geometry node set up in here. What you can do is you can adjust this to adjust things like the noise seed in here, as well as the noise scale. One thing to note about this, by the way, is um, the viewport density and the render density are going to be different, right? So the viewport density, for example, is going to be fairly low in order to improve performance, but notice if I was to drag that to the right, I see a lot more moss in here. And so notice how if I drag this way down, right, it doesn't look especially great. Um, right here, but if I was to actually go up and do a render, right, so render, render image, 
Then notice how the render itself is going to render out with a lot more instances of the moss actually in there. So note that that's just a performance thing, but you've got the ability to adjust things like properties of the moss, right? So as I drag up like the number of spiky leaves or other things like that, um, or the quality, of the spiky leaves, notice how we're getting a lot more kind of showing up in here. So you can adjust like the length of that moss as well as the quality of that moss using the sliders over here. So this gives you a fair amount of control over the moss that you can create inside of your scene. And so one other thing to note about this is notice how there's a checkbox in here where you can either use a weight paint group or you can not. Um, when you don't, then it's just going to basically procedurally generate um, these materials and the moss in here. But if you check the box for use weight paint group, then you jump over here into weight paint mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my weight up, maybe reduce my radius a little bit. But notice how you can actually paint in here and paint the different areas where you want this all to show up like this. So you can definitely use weight paint mode in order to do this. Notice how that seed in here is going to allow you to adjust this a little bit as well. But you can definitely use this to do weight painting in here for actual placement of the moss. All right, so I'll link to all of these in the notes down below. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if, which ones you like as well as if there's any that I missed. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.